Welcome back. It's time for Silver and Black today, an Odyssey original podcast covering Las Vegas Ra Raiders. Excuse me. Also heard on 105.3 KDON and the bet in Las Vegas. So yes, we're on two different radio stations in Las Vegas, FM and of course HD2. So welcome back to our radio audience in Las Vegas. It's good to be back on the air as we are on the eve, sort of, at least by a few days, of Raiders training camp out in Costa Mesa, California. So we're going to have all that for you. If it's the first time listening to the show, welcome. We've been doing this for quite a while. I'm Scott Cobranson, your host, joined by my co-host and partner in all of this. That is Mr. Mo Moten. He is a senior NFL writer at Bleach Report, also Raiders columnist at sportsnot.com, where you can also catch my work as well. Mo, we're back. Uh, we're back on the radio. It's it's getting closer. This will be kind of the last show. I had some comments from folks. Oh, by the way, subscribe. If you're listening to us on the radio, you hear us on Sundays. But guess what? You can listen to us during the week, too. Just go subscribe uh, wherever you get your audio to Silver and Black today. And if you're watching us on YouTube, the hey to everybody out there in the crowd. Uh, but Mo, um, you know, this is the this is the last show where we won't have actual 2024 Raiders football to talk about. Finally, I've uh, been waiting for this day to come because <laughs> I am probably up to my neck in the probably the first subject we're going to talk about that I'm completely done with talking about on Twitter. But we'll talk about it for the people yes. today, uh, just simply because it's it's once again, it's not going away, Scott. It's one of those things that you ever had something like a sickness or something that just it just won't go away. That, yes, that's, that, what these Devante, that's what these Devontae Adams trade rumors are. Yes, that that nagging cough. Right. It's like you can't get yeah. rid of it. You can't get rid of it. It takes forever. Yeah. So yeah. we're there with that. And and we're going to get into that too. So during this <laughs> week, we've heard a lot about Devontae Adams. We talked a little bit about the last show uh, where Boomer Esiason had reported he believed that the Raiders would trade for, or excuse me, the Raiders would trade Devontae Adams to the Jets before the end, or excuse me, before the end of camp, basically, or before the end of the, uh, uh, or excuse me, end of the preseason into the season. So, uh, which we couldn't understand, and we'll talk about that in a second. Then you had some other ESPN shows. Dan Orlovsky on Get Up talked about it, even though the other gentleman on there, and I forget his name, Mo, if you remember his name, but he came on and said, yeah, no, I don't think that's happening. But anyway, he mentioned it and said he, he wouldn't be surprised if Devontae Adams joined the Jets sometime this year, although he also hinted it could be earlier than later. And I just don't understand it. And I will tell you, and listen, Raider Nation, you get mad at me, go ahead. I'll, I'll deal with the blowback. You guys are getting obsessed about it. Don't be obsessed about it. Don't worry about it. Most of you don't believe it anyway. So just kind of let it go. We talked about it, Mo. And for everybody, especially our radio audience that's joining us again after the off season, we talked about this. The reason why it makes no sense for Devonte Adams to be traded now with the Raiders. If you go through that scenario one more time for everybody so they can get their panties out of a bunch and just chillax for a minute here. So I'm going to start this with this signature Mo sigh. <laughs> this topic, it, I don't know how this topic still has legs. Devonta Adams was on, first of all, before I get into why it doesn't make sense, and we, I'm sure a lot of our listeners already understand my stance on this. Mm -hmm. Devonta Adams is on Club Shay Shay, popular now podcast Shannon Sharp has now. And he basically, he addressed rumors. And Devontae has said, what do I look like playing for a team and then talking behind the scenes about playing for another team? He said, that's not him. Uh, he also said that, you know, if he had, were to reunite with anybody or play with a quarterback other than the team he's playing for right now, he would play with Aaron Rodgers. He would relocate and play with Aaron Rodgers. But he also said his first and foremost, uh, I guess, priority right now is playing for the Raiders. That's what he said. Because now everyone's going to clip out him saying he would love, he would like to, <laughs> you know, reunite with Aaron Rodgers if the Raiders were to change their mind, if the Raiders would decide that he's not in their plans. Keep that in mind. He said, if the Raiders decide that he's not in their plans. Devontae has never said, I, I think, you know, I'm on the fence about playing for the Raiders. I don't know if I'm going to finish the season with them. He said, if the Raiders have a change of heart and they feel like he's not, you know, not in their long term scope, then. If he had to pick somewhere to go, then obviously Aaron Rodgers and they have that connection. Now, Jeff Darlington was the guy, ESPN reporter, that yes. was on set with Dan Orlovsky and basically said, it doesn't make sense, right? His, his words were, it's really not in the cards right now. 
which is what we've been saying for, I don't know, the past month and a half. Right. Uh, that it doesn't make sense. Um, Chef, they're also posted from Devontae Adams agents that the rumors are baseless. There haven't been any talks. There's no traction there. So right there from Jeff Darlington being an esteemed reporter to Devontae Adams saying it himself and through his agent, folks, it's not happening anytime soon. <laughs> now, if you want to revisit this conversation at the trade deadline, if the Raiders aren't playing well, then I then the conversation has legs. Then there's some possibly there's some validity there with if the Raiders think, okay, we're going to blow up our offense and then trade Devontae Adams for a draft pick. Then it becomes a real conversation. But as of now, as of mid-July, before week one, early in the season, it's a it's a non-starter. It's not happening. It's a non-starter. And even for those Raider fans, because we've heard from them, even had calls here on the show about the fact that, hey, if we could get a number one for Devontae Adams, if the Raiders could get, you know, they trade him because they're going to have to get a quarterback still and it doesn't make sense to keep him, blah, blah, blah. There's that point of view out there. I'm not saying I subscribe to it, but I get that point of view. But even then, it makes no sense because if you're to trade your top receiver right now, then what does that tell your team? What does it tell your brand new coach? Because remember, folks, I know everybody loves Antonio Pierce for the most part. They're excited about him starting and having the job full time. So, hey, coach, listen, you know, it's tough NFL. You can get fired after a year or two around here if you don't do well. Um, so we're going to take away your one of your best weapons. Does that sound good? Set you up for success? No. Also, the quarterbacks. Yes, he's got to get the ball. Much of this was driven, and we talked about this last time, by the receivers docuseries on Netflix. Okay. That was last year during the Josh McDaniels train wreck. So anybody outside, and Mo, you say this all the time, a lot of people, and listen, I'm not begrudging anybody. I'm not begrudging Dan Orlovsky for giving his opinion. It's his opinion. But it's not as informed as those people who pay attention to and cover the Raiders all year round. It's just not. Because if you knew what was happening during that show and all that stuff was happening with Jimmy Garoppolo and the fact that he had nothing, then you understand why he was frustrated. Oh, why am I playing Bob? Yeah, it made sense at the time, but things have changed. So you look at that and you say, all right. And if somebody writes a story, I wrote a story about it on Sports Not basically saying it was ridiculous. And even though he said it, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. What? Why would you do it? Yeah, if you get a number one pick, you're not going to get a number one pick. So this time of the year, I mean, we're right at the end here. We're right, get right into camp. And yes, deals happen during camp a lot. But Mo, I will eat a shoe if he gets traded before the end of before the trade deadline. Excuse me, before the beginning of the season, <laughs> I'll eat yeah, a shoe because it's yeah. not going to happen. It, it's and you hinted to it. I say this all the time. Tell me you don't watch Raider football. Pay attention to Raider <laughs> football without telling me you don't watch or pay attention to Raider football because exactly. Devontae Adams' frustrations were directed toward a quarterback who was no longer on the Raiders roster under a head coach who's no longer the Raiders head coach. Yes. So, and a GM who's no longer the GM. And a GM who's no longer the GM. So, what are we even talking about here? <laughs> we're, we're we're I could see if this was happening in real time. Right. Then I could see, you know, why it would pick up. But as you said, this happened last season. And this is why I say I don't I don't know if people pick up on these rumors or actually paying attention to the timeline or they think about these things before they say them. It's it's just a mixture of just people not paying attention to the Raiders and what they went through last season and how Devontae Adams was one of the loudest voices in support of Antonio Pierce being hired and how he is he also said in that docuseries that he signed off on Aiden O'Connell starting and Aiden O'Connell is right now competing for the job. So to say, oh, he's still unhappy with the quarterbacks that the Raiders have is baseless also because if Aiden O'Connell looks pretty good during training camp in the preseason, and he looks like he can, you know, take a leap in his second year and get the ball to Devontae Adams. There are no issues. Um, again, for for right now, the Raiders feel like they right can now. do some things with either Gardner Minshew or Aiden O'Connell. We'll see how that turns out. But again, the conversation has no base until the trade deadline. If the Raiders are terrible and the Jets are good, because what if the Jets are terrible? Yeah. What if we get to the trade deadline and the Raiders are about five hundred and the Jets are like two and six? <laughs> He's not going to want to go to New York to a two and six team that's on fire. No. By the way, by the way, there were reports out there that the Jets 
try have tried to replace their offensive coordinator twice. They were trying to demote Nathaniel Hackett, who's the offensive coordinator of the Jets, before before the training camp even happened. And they even contacted Arthur Smith about calling plays for Nathaniel Hackett before Arthur Smith took the job with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So right. if you're looking at that and you're Devontae as why would you want to go to a team that clearly yeah. doesn't yeah. believe in their offensive coordinator? Right. It's, it, it doesn't, it, none of it no. makes sense. It, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the East coast media to a certain degree as well. And, and again, those are some talented guys out there. Got nothing against them other than this, you know, Mike Greenberg, these guys, they got a hard on for getting Aaron Rodgers and Devonte Adams back together. All right. You, they want you also it. Scott. So really quick, Scott, you also got yeah. Mike Greenberg is a Jet fan. So yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I'm saying. So fantasy. so the Jet fans and they're openly fans, and I get it, whatever, but they want they want to wish it into existence. Now, the Jets are 12 and 2, or excuse me, whatever this what's the that's after week 10, right? Or week eight. I can't remember. Week eight. The trade deadline? Yeah. It's around eight or week eight or nine. Because it's, so, it's this year's November fifth after election day. So okay. So so if if the, if the Jets are eight and one and the Raiders, uh, you know, are the opposite, or which I don't think, but if anyway, let's say the Raiders are really struggling, then okay, then you can start talking about it. It would make a lot of sense. But until then, not the other thing. Before we got a few minutes here before we hit our first break, and again, welcome to our K Dawn audience on one hundred one five FM, as well as our Bet audience in Las Vegas too. Back on the radio there. Um, the other thing is, please stop with the Brandon IU crap as well. Like, come on. Like, come on. Here, in one breath, you're hearing people on the East Coast talking about how, oh, Devontae Adams could be traded from the Raiders to the Jets. And then you're hearing people go, whoa, the Raiders could go get Brandon Ayuk. What are you talking about? What? What? I, Mo, I, I'm almost speechless on this one because he's a good receiver. Don't get me wrong. But why would you do that? Like, it makes no sense to me. Unless you disagree with me, which I hope not, because I might have to just shut you out of here. But no, I mean, there's people making videos, talking about it on talk shows. Right underneath the Raiders go good. They've been rumored to go. BS. It's the whole Antonio Pierce connection, the whole Arizona, Arizona State, State. Yeah, connection. I get that. that. People, people are connecting dots with their crayons that don't exist. But this is this is what happens when you have no football on TV and camps aren't in full blast <laughs> Amen. yet. Amen. And you want people getting their Elon bucks. I call them Elon bucks because people now, as you know, if you have a check mark on your Twitter account and you get a certain amount of views on certain posts, you get paid. People want yep. their Elon bucks. <laughs> and, I, and I say just avoid the people who are looking for the Elon bucks people because that's what a lot of individuals yep. are doing now they're posting things not because they believe in it's going to happen just because they want the attention to that post so they get paid it's all about the dollar when it and comes to these silly yeah keep it, a tally all, get a it, note card and and these people who put out this brandon you could be a writer go take a <laughs> note card and mark down how many times they give you as i called it on the last show sports talk sports content porn that doesn't deliver you can't actually touch the woman or the man, whatever you're into, in the porn, right? And this this is all crap. So just keep keep score on these people because it will show you what Mo is saying is true, which is they're making their Elon bucks. I like that. That's true. Like I, I sincerely hope we are done with this topic until like, me too. Trade that. <laughs> but I have a feeling it's going to be like the Derek Carr thing, where it's like it's going to come up. Any the Raiders go on a two game losing streak. Oh, they're going to trade Adams now. You know what I'm saying? But hopefully they don't and hopefully things go wildly successfully for the Raiders and we don't have to talk about anybody being traded because everybody's so happy that the team's doing so well please for no Raiders I, I need, <laughs> for for my sanity here in New I, York I know City, the fans I, agree with you I, I for my sanity here in New York City and the jet and again Jets fans are some nice folks but they're also very delusional with this one I understand I understand um, what's not delusional is how good Max Crosby <laughs> is. And I, wa I was watching something this week that I'm going to share with you guys. And, and it raised the, the, the specter in my head about Max Crosby. How good could he be? Can he become one of the greatest players, not only in Raiders history, but in NFL history? I don't know. Right. It, it, we have to go, but what does it take? And I'm going to share with you this documentary I watched about this specific player. And you'll understand when I say who it is, you're going to be like, yeah, I get that. But I saw some of that, different people, different personalities on that. But what I saw in that documentary about this great player 
was a lot of the things that I see from Max Crosby, including their backgrounds from a college perspective, their playing careers, all that kind of stuff. So I want to talk about that when we come back. And then for those of you, uh, again, new to the show, because I know we have a lot of new listeners, not only to the podcast, but also to the show on 101.5 FM KDON and on the Bet in Las Vegas, we're going to talk uh, with you. We, we have a, a fan segment, a call segment, where you can call in with our Raider Nation mailbag. So we'll give you that number later if you're listening to us on the radio, because you can leave the call during the week, and then we'll get to you here on the show. So it's good. But right now, we're going to take a break. We're going to take our first break here on this edition of Silver and Black today. When we come back, we'll talk about Max Crosby. Raider Nation loves to talk about Max Crosby. We'll get into that. And then again, in the final segment, we're going to get to you, the Raider Nation mailbag. Got some good calls and some interesting calls, which we'll address when we get there. So hang on right where you are. You're listening to Silver and Black today. This is Scott and Mo. We're coming back right after this. Welcome back. Segment number two here on Silver and Black today on 101.5 FM KDON in Las Vegas. Also heard on The Bet in Las Vegas. And we are also a, guess what? Odyssey Sports original podcast. So if you're listening to us on the radio, you can listen to us many times more a week by just going up to your favorite place wherever you get your audio. Subscribe to Silver and Black today. You can also check out that free Odyssey app, which is awesome. You can listen to us both on the radio there and the podcast. We also have a great YouTube channel. If you want to watch the show, we put the shows up there. We have very lively live chat along with the show when it premieres. So uh, make sure you do that. Scott Branson, Mo Moten back with you talking Raiders football. The Raiders, of course, go into camp this weekend. Yes, finally. No more crappy trade talk. No more BS about this or about that. We actually get to get down to actual professional football and Mo two weeks until the hall of fame game the bears and the texans i believe yes cj stroud i was like two weeks oh whew. it's coming man it's coming fast waiting for the raider for first preseason game but you know <laughs> uh it would be good to see some football on the tv screen even though the stars won't be out there cool. a lot of guys competing for jobs so that's important to them um, but August comes and you know what time it is. And I'm yes. excited for it. And college football is right around the corner too. So if you're just a football head, like we are, it's also great that college football is coming around as well. Go ahead. Raider fans may be looking at some quarterbacks. Mm. What do you mean? We have our franchise quarterback. <laughs> so Somebody would hope. say some folks. Would so, you, say, hey. so, you, so you hope. And maybe it happened. By the way, I have to bid a fond farewell to the Mirage Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Very, for those of you who've been to Las Vegas, of course, this is where the new Las Vegas all started back in 1989, closed its doors. It's going to become a hard rock. And uh, so it's going to be closed, I think, for 18 months or whatever. But the Mirage is gone. Very, very sad for those of us who've lived in Las Vegas, who know about the Mirage, the history of the Mirage. So farewell, Mirage. And uh, now they're going to build where the volcano used to be. They're going to build a big guitar tower, like the one in Florida. So there you go. Time keeps moving, Mo. It doesn't matter, right? Just keeps going. Florida West. No, yeah, right. Las Vegas presidents are going to get mad at that comment. but <laughs> <laughs> Florida West. Oh, there you go. All right. So, I see, so Mo, this is what I want to lay out to you, too. And, and, and again, we're going to get into a lot of football coming up in the next few weeks with the with Raiders camp started. But, you know, I'm getting geared up for the football season. So I started to watch football <laughs> life on NFL Network, which I've seen a bunch of them many, many times. And I saw this one maybe three, four years ago. I can't remember how long it was. But I just hadn't seen it in a while. And I hadn't thought about this player in a while, other than mentioning him here or there, because to me, he's probably the best football player ever. And that's Lawrence Taylor, okay, the New York Giants. So I'm watching It's a Football Life or a Football Life with, with Lawrence Taylor. And outside of the problems he had with drugs during his career, now Max had, of course, his issue, which he took care of. He's been sober now for four years, I think it is, he just celebrated or somewhere around there. So congratulations to him. But um, I'm watching this interview with him and I'm seeing and remembering Lawrence Taylor when he was at North Carolina and hearing his college coaches talk about, yeah, his freshman, sophomore year, eh, he was okay, he wasn't great, he was this. His junior year, he kicked it into, into high gear and then his senior year just went over the top and that's how he became a New York Giant in the first round, uh, the second overall pick uh, to the New York Giants in that year, 1981, I believe it was. So, so 
you see that, and then he gets into the NFL, and 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 I think it was Bill Belichick, of course, who was one of his defensive coaches at the time, asked him, do you want to be a really good player or do you want to be one of the best players ever? And he said, I want to be one of the best players ever. So it go went through his work ethic, what he did. Now, Lawrence, I'm not comparing Max Crosby, as good as Max Crosby is, <laughs> to Lawrence Taylor. Different positions, different eras, all that kind of stuff. But also, I just think Lawrence Taylor is the best football player that ever played from a defense standpoint. So, But I'm watching this, Mo, and I'm thinking about – how many similarities to the mindset, right? Again, very different guys. But the mindset of Mac, Max Crosby, the reason he gets so much coverage despite the Raiders' lack of success in recent years, he's had individual success. But also, Max Crosby doesn't care about that. That's the other thing. Lawrence Taylor won uh, National uh, Defensive Player of the Year one year, uh, uh, MVP award, basically. And he said he didn't even know where the trophy was. He just didn't care about it, right? He's, he won a team. Exactly. That's what he was in for. So the, the reason I bring this up, and, and I know I'm older than you, so you don't remember Lawrence Taylor playing as much. Maybe as a little kid, you remember him playing at the end of his career. <laughs> but but for those of us who grew up with him, too, how great he was. But in seeing that and just understanding that what it takes to be that best play, to be one of the elite best in the history of the game. And Max Crosby has to he's not there yet. But I think he's got the mindset, and if things go his way, injury-free, all that kind of stuff, I think he has the ability to be up there with the greats. I think he absolutely does. He definitely has the mindset. He talks about being great. I mean, he has the tattoos <laughs> to yeah. tell you what his goals, yes. you know, what his goals are. And when you hear him talk, you understand what his goals are. Now, team success is number one, but of course, he wants to be great, and then he feels like him being great will help the Raiders also be great now what can he do to, to get to that level and i talked about this is the theme of our last show is consistency the c word so that <laughs> so last season he had 14 and a half sacks which is his highest no his career higher so he's he's on if he's on that trajectory <laughs> for the next few years he's going to eventually rack up the defensive player of the year awards now that, especially right. now that aaron Donald is retired and he isn't <laughs> hogging all the awards I think Max Crosby should should be in the thick of that conversation. And of course, you know, the TJ Watts of the world is still out oh, there. The, mm -hmm. the Nick Bosa's, the Miles Garrett's are still out there. But when you look at Max Crosby and his numbers, and I and I say this still, I still feel like he's an underrated star because the Raiders haven't had the success of, of you know the Steelers and even the Browns this past season and Nick Bosa, especially with the 49ers. Max Crosby doesn't get the attention that those guys get. So depending on how you measure greatness, you know, he has to get those awards. He would have to gain some traction nationally from the national media so he can get right. those awards. So he could be recognized as one of the greats. Because if you are going to be considered one of the greats, he's going to have to win defensive player of the year at least once. So he's going to have to get that national traction. I know Raider fans hate the media and say the media is going to slight the Raiders anyway and not give him the credit he deserves. That's just a fact of the matter. Now, if you could look at his numbers, just purely look at his numbers and say, if he's on this trajectory, 14 and a half sacks last season, I believe he had 12, 12 and a half the year before, mm -hmm. he's going to get in the Hall of Fame. But if he wants to be considered as one of the elites, Defensive Player of the Year award, double digit sacks for the next you know few years, longevity, got to gotta be got to be playing mm -hmm. for a long period of time, and I also think part of it is outside of his his reach. And I know a lot of times we, we speak about greatness is like, what can you do to make yourself be great? But let's say Christian Wilkins is that interior pass rushing presence that the, that the Raiders have missed for so long. That could help Max Crosby. That can help open up things for Max Crosby on the, on the edge. If he has a running mate who can you know, garner a lot of attention, some double teams as well, because Max Crosby is facing double, triple teams, right? So if you have another running mate, another pass, another edge rusher teammate, Malcolm Coons, Christian Wilkins, who knows maybe Tyree Wilson, it could take some of the spotlight off of Max Crosby, and he, you know, lo and behold, he may get a one on one here and there. He'll be able to dominate mm. that one on one <laughs> and rack up those numbers. So some of it is can his teammates help him get there? Because 100%. we all know you don't you don't achieve greatness by yourself. A lot of people say this when they accept awards. You see it at, at ceremonies all the time. You say people say, "Hey, I didn't do this alone. Right, I needed somebody to help me out. I needed a team to help me out." I think. That goes for Max Crosby and his defensive line mates too. 
Yeah, I mean, listen, Lawrence Taylor had Harry Carson. He had Carl Bang. I mean, four of those guys up front in the linebacker core are Hall of Famers on that same team, right? Mm -hmm. So you look at that, and you're absolutely correct. That doesn't take anything away from Lawrence Taylor and what he did and who he was. Yeah. So, And that's what you're saying about Max Crosby. If they build that, and that's where the winning comes to, because the other thing that struck me about that documentary, and, and I don't know if this is Max Crosby and Antonio Pierce, if things go well and it develops into the relationship that it can be, it could be. But Lawrence Taylor talked about, he's like, look, Bill Parcells was my guy. Like I, That's why he retired a couple of years after. He, he said, he said, I retired the year he left, but I, I still played three more years, right? <laughs> Which was, he, he was so motivated. He was someone who was so... In, in sync with Lawrence Taylor. Now he helped him off the field with the drug problems and all that stuff too. But it, on the field, when it came to football, that's why he also credits his coach. He said that we had such a good relationship and I would do anything for that man. I would die for that man. I would do everything. So I think that to your point is to be one of those elite players, there's some who are able to do it as individual performers. It doesn't happen as often as you think it might. But when you have a guy with Max Crosby's talent, abilities, mindset, if you get the right environment around him, if the Raiders become what many think they could be, especially on defense after last year, then that's where it starts. Because then you're right. Then you might win over TJ Watt for defensive player of the year because the Raiders go to the playoffs and have a great season and they're a winning team, not a team that was a game under uh, 500 or not 500 anymore, but they were eight and nine instead of, you know, 11 and seven or 11 and six. So, so to me, you're absolutely correct. But I was just, it just hit me like watching that. I'm like, hmm, you know, Max Crosby could be that guy if he continues on his trajectory, consistency, as you said. And then the Raiders as a franchise, as a team under Antonio Pierce, and then whoever comes after him, even if he has success, if they can keep it going and build a consistently competitive and good team, then I think he can get there as well. Maybe this is the year Max Crosby wins Defensive Player of the Year, right? So because... Yeah. Nick Bosa, by his standards, I won't say had a down year last year, but he didn't compare it to the year before that. Mm -hmm. uh, TJ Watt got nicked up last year. Uh, you, you never know with injuries how they can go. Once they, once you get one injury one year, it can snowball into the, and you know you start to have start to pile up injuries. Miles Garrett, I don't know how good the Cleveland Browns defense is going to be again. It's it, you know simple because you know with that division you're playing it's against. Tough. Lamar Jackson, you're playing Bo if Burrow stays healthy. Yeah. It, it could be tough. If Russell Wilson bounces back has a decent year, you may not have as good as numbers if you're an edge rusher like Miles Garrett. So it right. this could be the year with the Raiders defense the way it is, set, the way it's set up and adding Christian Wilkins. This could be the year that Max Crosby breaks through. Now he may have to get 16 and a half sacks, and I think he's capable of doing that sure. to get the award, but I, also, the Raiders have to win a decent amount of games. They exactly. don't necessarily have to be, you know, 12 and 5, 13 and 4, no. but they have to be, you know, at least around 500 so that he gets more of that attention. Because let's be, let's be honest, these awards are, are also focused on players who are usually typically with winning football teams or teams that are on the upswing. Yeah, I think I think it's a situation, Mo, where if if you don't make the playoffs, you like didn't make the playoffs because you missed it by a game, but you still finished with a winning record type of thing. You know, that's where I see guys like that win awards that don't necessarily make the playoffs or win their division or whatever. Uh, and who knows, maybe they will. It, 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 anything can happen, but that mindset and that desire and that drive, forget the physical abilities and differences in the positions at the time. It just, it just struck me as I was watching that. I was like, you know, that's, that's the same kind of guy. That's the same kind of mentality. Um, and, and they, they, their backgrounds were, were similar in many ways. And so that struck a, a chord with me. And so I, I know I'm excited to see Max Crosby because of the reason we talked about on our last show with Christian Wilkins in there and some of the other pieces like Tyree Wilson, who could come along and Malcolm Kuntz who's come along if he's still there and all that kind of stuff. So to me, uh, the, 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 the sky is the limit and let's just hope that the Raiders and Max Crosby rise together. Cause that's how they both can be the best they can be. That elite defense that some of our callers hope the Raiders defense can be. <laughs> if it's an elite defense, Max Crosby is definitely going to get a major a lot of the credit for it. If assuming he is the leading sack pressure guy on that front line, correct. And if they, as we said on the last show as well, if they have a really good interior presence and 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 they're developing pressure there because of Wilkins and others, 
uh, and then they have another edge player that's that's performing at a high level as well, then he's going to eat. He's going to eat like he never ate before because we've seen him without a lot of help, and he's done really well. So it's going to be very exciting to see that. But but anyway, watch that if you haven't. I know they're playing a lot of those because there's no programming, although next, next week it'll probably all be new programming because there's actually stuff to talk about. This time of the year, even NFL Network doesn't have their live shows and all that because there's not much going on, but uh, it'll be exciting to to get into that. And of course, the Raiders, rookies report on Saturday and, and on Sunday. If you're listening to us on the radio, which you're listening to us on Sunday, they report today to the Costa Mesa training camp, the ex-Chargers training camp. They have their former... GM and now they have their former training camp, which will be interesting. I haven't seen any pictures yet. I want to see what they did to it out there and and whatnot. So it'll be be interesting. But uh, here we go, man. We're getting ready for this. And not only that, but next segment we're going to take our final break. When we come back, Mo and I are going to take your calls. Yes, you can call in. We'll give you the number out in the next segment, so you can call in. You can leave a voicemail or a text. We got a bunch of them. I don't know if we can get to all of them today. If we don't, we'll carry you over to the podcast early next week. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that, the Raider Nation mailbag here on Silver and Black today. You're listening to us on 101.5 FM, KDON, also the Bet in Las Vegas and Odyssey original podcast. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. It is time for the home stretch here, the final segment of Silver and Black today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast covering the Las Vegas Raiders, also heard on 101.5 FM, KDON in Las Vegas, as well as the bet in Las Vegas, which is on HD2. So you can listen to us on FM or you can listen to us on HD radio or on the podcast, wherever you get your audio, just subscribe to Silver and Black today. Do us a favor, uh, go ahead and do that. And then like us, rate us, give us a review. We would appreciate that very much for your listeners. And a hearty hello again to our YouTube audience. Okay, Mo, we're gonna get right to the calls here because we got a bunch we wanna get through. So we'll, we'll try to get to them uh, and uh, we'll start out in California. Oh, it says, yeah, I think Raider. His name is Raider Heck. Like, ah, heck. Right? So Raider Heck. I don't think he's called in before. I know. I think if he chatted with us before. But here's Raider Heck, our first call here on the Raider Nation mailbag. Hey, this is Raider Heck from Whittier. Whittier, California. Uh, just calling. Uh, uh, great show. Great show, by the way. Great show. Outstanding show. But I was calling about a, a, a last year, the... Uh, on a website called the ethical skeptic mm. uh, went over some, uh, the bias towards the Raiders. It was very <laughs> interesting, uh, kind of eye opening stuff that I've kind of, I've been a Raider fan 50 plus years Woo. and, uh, seen some of these calls that, that went against the Raiders that, that, that were questionable anyways. Uh, wondering if you guys can look it up, check it out and maybe comment on your show. Uh, but I do recommend it to all the Raider fans out there to get on there. Ethical skeptic. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be listening to the show all week. See if you guys comment on it. Uh, right on. Go Raiders. All right. There you go. Raider Heck from Whittier, California. Of course, the home of a former president, Richard Nixon. I know he's not a popular former president, but Nonetheless, I'm just giving you a little history lesson with your California Raider heck. Uh, yes, Ethical Skeptic was actually first on my show, mm -hmm. I want to say three or four years ago, Mo. And before my time. Yes, it was before you were on the show. This that, That's back in the days when you were a guest on the show from mm -hmm. time to time. But, I was a uh, nobody. <laughs> oh, now you're, big, now you're a big TV star. Um, but anyway he came on and it was a very eye opening right and and you can find it if you go to our youtube page especially you can find it on our youtube page you can find that exact show and i think we reran it a couple times too but nonetheless uh it, it was phenomenal i even shared it with mark bedane who was a, a president of the raiders at the time because i was like just dude and this guy's background he worked for navy intelligence i mean he's he's the real deal he's not some crackpot out there and um although mo last year the raiders were one of the least penalized teams in the nfl I, I was just going to say that. So while it, I think it was ethical skeptic. Yeah. It, clearly there is research. But the, now the question is, did Antonio Pierce break the curse or the bias <laughs> against the Raiders? Because the Raiders, the Raiders least penalized team in the league last year. Yes. So either Antonio Pierce is doing something right or or the, the hex has been lifted off the Raiders last year. So right. We'll right. see now. We'll see if they can 
what's what's the see where it's got consistency let's see if they can keep this up will they be one of the least penalized teams this year or was that just a one-year aberration we will find we will find out or as what they would call in statistics an outlier an outlier Oh boy. Okay. We're going to get into uh, our good friend, Jacob and Fresno. If you're not familiar with Jacob and Fresno, if you're listening to us for the first time, get ready. Cause here's Jacob. This is Jacob from Fresno. What's up guys. Hey, so I'm, uh, I'm listening to the show this week right now it's a tuesday for me i think you guys might have uploaded on monday i'm not sure how it's going just yet i don't understand how the schedule's going i know you guys are doing once a week but i'm listening to the beginning portion right now with max crosby and how you guys are talking about the slack he took on twitter a little bit um i wanted to speak to it i'm not going to get political <laughs> not gonna, i'm gonna try not to get political Good. you know i am a i am a follower of the lord jesus christ and politics are all secondary. I, I just want people to know that there's a God out there who, who loves them and wants uh, salvation and reconciliation for all people and it's all kinds of people. And so with that, I, I'm all about being a unifier, a unifier, taking people from all kinds of backgrounds and being of a common goal, being of a common mind. And with that kind of worldview that I have personally, which I'm sharing with you guys, being a little bit vulnerable, with that kind of worldview, <laughs> Um, there's a lot of backlash that comes with it. There's a lot of back and forth. People don't like that. And if I share it with them, sometimes they really don't like it. And uh, the whole point of our nation, I guess not the whole point, but a big principle in our nation is being tolerant of opposing views. Mm -hmm. And I know that the left is kind of that way. They kind of stand on that principle. They say, you know, they're intolerant. These people are intolerant. Well, Let's think about when somebody shares a political view or just support for a human being, and then you say, I hate your livelihood and will no longer support you. I no longer choose to support your livelihood because of something you believe or somebody you stand with. That's the epitome of intolerance right there. That is not where we ought to be. I think we ought to see that on both sides because nobody's, you know, free from it on both sides. We got to say, no, intolerance is a terrible thing. Let's learn to love each other regardless of belief, regardless of, you know, religion, poli political view, everything, guys. And the Raiders are what we're here for. So let's stay <laughs> one nation, unified, Raider Nation, the only nation. Let's go. <laughs> Hooray. There you go, Jacob, with some, some uh, uh, philosophical, some life advice. And I don't disagree with them in, in that, you know, we barely touched on that. And it was funny because I thought we would get more comments because we didn't go deep. And, and Mo and I don't talk about politics on the show. It's always funny, though, to me when we bring up things like that and we barely just talk about them just to give, uh, I think, recognition of the fact that people are talking about it, not giving our personal views or any of that kind of stuff. But people jump to the conclusion because we talk about it that we feel a certain way about it or that we support. In that case, he, he tweeted out something about Donald Trump because he had just gotten shot. Uh, and so suddenly then, oh, I didn't know this was a MAGA show or, oh, you guys, uh, you guys are ultra liberal. Like, it, it's amazing to me how people can listen to the same thing and make the assessment that Mo and I think a certain way, even though we didn't even tell you how we think about it, just because we talked about the subject. And I think that gets a little bit to what Jacob was saying. I know we're getting off football a little bit here, but it even goes back to talking about the Raiders. When you don't like a player, or you don't think Antonio Pierce should have been coach, or you think Antonio Pierce should have been coach, rah, it's like hate. And unfortunately, social media has given even bigger rise to that, right? Jacob from Fresno, the unifier. I like that. I do Jacob, like should, that. Jacob should introduce himself as I'm Jacob, the unifier of the nation. <laughs> I, I, I think it. that should be Jacob's new intro when he gets yes. on the show. Yes. But one thing I will say about Jacob's comment, and I thought about this, and it has, and it beyond the Max Crosby post on on Twitter or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, the X. In my lifetime, I noticed this, and it's not driven to a specific party, but I've noticed with some people, the people who 
preach about you have to be more tolerant, you have to be more tolerant, you have to be more tolerant. Some of those people are the most intolerant people you'll meet. <laughs> That's exactly what it's, he said. Yeah. It, it's it's almost like they want you to tolerate their beliefs, their their thoughts, their perspective, but they don't have to tolerate your beliefs, your perspective, your yeah. philosophy. Yeah. It's not a, if you're if you're going if you're going to preach tolerance it has to go both ways, doesn't it? If yeah. you're going to preach tolerance it, it has to be a two-way street. It can't be a one-way street. Well, that's just and, one thing I thought about. Right, and there's nothing and and we do it on this show and it's not a shtick, it's not an act. Sometimes you and I disagree on something, right? <laughs> you might vehemently believe in one thing and I think it's the opposite. So why would you just focus on what you don't agree on? Why would you just focus on uh, that, on the negative instead? And I was just talking to a good friend of mine today who happens also to be African-American, grew up in, when I say the hood, Mo, I'm talking he grew up in the hood. You know, he talks about how he had to get potatoes out of his cabinet that were eaten, eaten by roaches to eat every day. Like, it was bad, right? Now he's done, a lot, he's done good for himself, was a firefighter, everything. But, but we were talking about that, and it was like we never focus on what was different. I, I listened to what was different because I can learn because I didn't grow up like that. But we always find the commonalities, right? So as Jacob is saying, you guys all love the Raiders. <laughs> so whether you like each other politically or not, or if you have different views on where things should go on this or that, great. But when it comes to, hey, okay, fine, great. Let's not talk about that. Or if we talk about it, I just disagree with you, whatever. You have your opinion. I got mine. What about the Raiders? <laughs> so, And if you disagree on what the Raiders should do, that's fine too. You could talk about that, but make it fruitful, make it fun and uh, respect the fact that people have other views and, 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 and just deal with it, right? We can all deal with it. We can all deal with it. All right. Great job by Jacob, the unifier. All right. We're going to yes. get to, we're running out of time. So I want to get to these calls as much as I can. Here is Moses in Tracy, California, up in Northern California. Here we go. Hey, Scott. Hey, Mo. This is Mike from Tracy. Oh, Mike. Hope y'all doing well. Just, uh, you know, Football's almost here. <laughs> got my bets in. Got my, you know, Aiden O'Connell MVP in. You know, <laughs> but uh, all jokes aside, I just want to see what your thoughts on who's going to be the most, let's say, surprise player this year. Hmm. I know last year the breakout was Malcolm Coops. And I'm wondering this year who might be your surprise breakout player. For me, I. I don't know. I just, I really like, um, what's his name? Kobe Myers. I think he's very underrated receiver. I think he's one of the, I think, second best receiver on the team, one of the best number two receivers in the league. And I'm wondering, um, who do you guys think will be the most surprised breakout player this year? I would love to hear your thoughts. Hope you are doing well. And uh, go Raiders. All right. That's Mike in Tracy, California. I don't know why I call him Moses. I have a good friend named Moses. Maybe he was on my mind. <laughs> um, surprise player there. Like, who's going to who's gonna surprise people, Mo? I was on with my guy, Chris, from Pre Protect the Shield podcast, excuse mm -hmm. me, uh, on Tuesday night. And we agreed wholeheartedly on this one because he's a big supporter of this player. Ja'Korian Bennett. I was a big nice. Ja'Korian Bennett guy. When he came out of Maryland, I feel yep. like he didn't get the attention he deserved because Deontay Banks went in the first round to the Giants. Jacorian Bennett is my surprise breakout player. He can actually win the starting job at cornerback opposite Jack Jones on the boundary. He's, ba he's battling with Brandon Face on right now. But I, I would assume a lot of people have given up on him because he struggled his rookie year, had an injury, basically was a special teamer in the last quarter of the season. Jacorian Bennett bounces back to be surprise player of the year, has three interceptions, Double digit pass breakups, 10 plus, and is your starting cornerback for the foreseeable future opposite Jack Jones. There you go. You ready for mine? You're going to be surprised. It's Aiden O'Connell. And that's going to create a real issue because I think he's going to do really well, do better than yeah. people expected, but he's not going to do so well that you're like, yeah, we don't need, we, if, we still need a franchise quarterback. Uh, I don't know. No, uh, I, I kid a little bit, but seriously, I think Aiden O'Connell, I don't know something it's, and it's just come upon me in the last week, Mo. I feel like that offensive line is going to hold up and do really well. For some reason, I feel that way. And so if that happens, I think Aiden O'Connell has a good year, has a really good year and he'll surprise people. And, um, but in order to do that, he's got to have Luke Getze have to have a good year. <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, maybe I'm caveat, but no. So that's my pick right there. So Mike, I appreciate the call. We had a couple other calls. We'll get to them on the podcast early next week because we're running out of time. The other guy, though, I think too, in even though everybody's going to be focused on Brock Bowers, is Michael Mayer. I think Michael Mayer is going to have a good full season and jump out a little bit and be closer to the expectations people had for him as well, Mo. What school did Michael Mayer go to and what school are you a fan of, Scott? What 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 are you talking about? <laughs> oh, no, Scott the the fifth. <laughs> go Irish. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. I'm not surprised by that pick, Scott. <laughs> Least surprising thing about that pick. Oh, yes. So we'll see. But I just well, I just think too, they're gonna be worried about Bowers. They're gonna he's gonna he's gonna leak out a lot and have some open field some spots over the middle. I'm telling you, especially with that offense. We'll see what it's possible. Happens, but. It's yes, plausible. it will be. All right, Mo, we got just a few seconds left. Tell everybody what you got going uh, the rest of this week, going into next week, uh, including your TV spots, uh, and knowing that some people will hear this on Sunday, so if it's on Friday or whatever, they'll miss it, but at least they'll be able to catch it next week. If you haven't gone over to sportsnet.com, go over now. I have a piece up on the for the Raiders. Three X factors that can impact their season. That doesn't have to do anything with the quarterback position because we all know the quarterback position is is the big storyline for the Raiders training camp going into the year. I have three other X factors that could significantly impact their year for the better or worse, uh, depending on what your perspective is. <laughs> I will have a Bleacher Report live on Thursday. Topic again to be announced. Um, if you have any ideas for a topic you want to talk about on the Bleacher Report live, shoot me some ideas, M-O-E-M-O-T-O-N on Twitter. And I'll go through your suggestions and maybe we'll, you know, we'll chop it up and chat about it. Yeah. Tell me, I, I got one for you. When does Brandon Ayuk get traded to the Raiders? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course. If there are any Devonte Adams idea traded, no. please save them. I don't want to hear them. I don't want to hear them. I also did a piece, by the way, that you can find on Sportsnet. So you can find his most stuff, my stuff. You can also go to Bleacher Report and catch most, all his NFL stuff, which is great as well. But uh, I did a piece that ran on Thursday or was it Friday? One of those, uh, that, uh, is the, the top 10 rookie seasons of all time for the Raiders. So what players had the best rookie seasons? Cause we're going into camp, got some rooks. So you can check that out too. I'm not a big list reader, but I think the Raider lists have done really well. And it's, it's surprising when I went through and did all the research on it. Some of the guys, the guys that popped up, I was like, Whoa, it was pretty good. Pretty good season. That's yardage impact on the team and the impact on the results. So Make sure you check that out. I forgot one thing. And yeah. Mike also talked, joked about his bet, Aiden O'Connell for MVP. Yeah. How can I forget? Over at Bleach Report, I did the over-under bets for every NFL team. Nice. So, for Raider fans, go check it out. Do I have the over-under for the Raiders at six and a half wins? The line has not moved for the Raiders. It's been six and a half the whole time. I, I placed my bet on that one. Find out what it is over-under over on Bleach Report drops on drops today sunday if you listen to this on sunday there you go so we will also list that up we always send our stuff out by the way follow mo on x.com at mo moton m-o-e-m-o-t-o-n i am at lv gully g-u-l-l-y and the show is snb today and we always send out uh work that mo's done that i've done whatever so you can always see that and you can follow him and and, and find find his content all the time as well. So we'll do that. All right. We're going to check out. We will catch back up with our radio audience next week, but you can catch up with us early next week on the podcast. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your audio. Mo, my friend, I can't wait. We get to talk about some football next week. Uh, have a great weekend and we'll talk to you soon. It's about time. See you next week. All right. For our executive producer at Odyssey at the radio stations in Las Vegas, Mark Bonilla, for our producer here on Silver and Black today, Mike Robier, and Momot, and I'm Scott Branson. We'll talk to you guys next time. Go Raiders.